Okay, very nice. So speaking of this then, um, I just want to tell you that we can basically determine specific heat capacity of solids. And one of the ways is to do like this. Um, in this question, they've shown the diagram, so I just wanted to copy that diagram as well. So actually what they have shown is that there is a heater. All right. In reality, if you ever wanted to make the symbol of heater, the symbol of heater is like this. Okay, so this is a heater and you can use it like vertically or whatever. And then there is a iron block or aluminum block, whatever you want to take it. And then there is a thermometer as well. Now, when you add all these things together, right? So what you do is you heat the block, check the change in thermometer with respect to time. And obviously you will be able to find it. Now, this is how the question goes on, right? So it says that the student uses this equipment when determining specific heat capacity of iron state the other equipment the student will need the measurement the student needs to take and the equation used when calculating the value of specific heat capacity of iron so i'm going to give you that four uh, points and you guys can copy this please let me know if you have any questions about it though all right now let's go so first of all um what happens is that This cable must be connected to some power supply and you're monitoring voltage and current, right? So we're gonna say, we're taking up, yeah, we're gonna say, so we're gonna say that, all right, this is how, wait a second, should be, Streaming, it is streaming. Why is it saying not streaming? Okay. So first of all, you would need a voltmeter and ammeter and a stopwatch. Okay. Now the reason we need this is because the voltmeter and ammeter will help us determine the power of heater by power equals to voltage times current. So most of you already know this. Okay, then, then what you do is that you're going to find the energy supplied by heater using energy equals to power into time. All right, so time is the time that you take for how much longer you basically providing power to it. So then, so check for a specific amount of time to the change in temperature. of the iron block right so we get that change in temperature by let's suppose we uh, turn it on for five minutes and then after five minutes we're seeing okay this is the time when you have uh, like the change in temperature happening right so that would give you delta theta fifth point would be that use a pan balance to measure the mass of the block finally you're gonna use 
heat capacity, specific heat capacity will be Q, the heat energy supplied that comes from, you know, uh, power into time, over mass times the change in temperature that we have noted for, which basically gives us a value of specific heat capacity. All right. Is it clear, everyone? Any questions? Let me know. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. So then, there is one thing that you should just note down, and that is that this extra point, if they ask this, which is very important. So, if they ask this, you should always remember that this particular, in this experiment, the object is not insulated. So, some of the heat will also be um, going to other, you know, in other, uh, like in the surroundings, right? So, the best way to get an accurate result by insulating the metal block and the insulators could be like anything like uh, wool cloth or something like that right wool or maybe rubber or whatever you want to put it so usually it would be a cloth that would be better okay so Yes, you guys have any questions? Please let me know. Caroline, Manal, Emal, sorry, Smile, Najaf. Najaf is not here, right? Today? Thank I know. You. Okay, you're here. Okay, that's cool. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. All right, should I go forward then? What do you guys say? Yes, sir. Okay. Now. Going to the next part then. Uh, I'm going to talk about if you guys have written it, then we can go. Or you can write it for one minute, please. Okay. All right, who's in? So speaking of this then, we're going to go to the next one and it says uh, in a student home there is a wooden burning stove which also is made of iron. The mass of the wooden stove is 85 kg. Wood burning stove. What is meant by the thermal capacity? And we should always remember the thermal capacity is the... Heat energy per unit mass oh it's just heat energy because it's not talk, talking about specific one heat energy required to raise temperature by one degree Celsius or one Kelvin. So that would be the answer. Then say the specific heat capacity of iron is this. Calculate the thermal capacity of this. Okay. Now the real difference between specific heat capacity, like specific heat capacity is uh, Q over M delta theta, whereas the heat capacity is Q over delta theta. So if there is no mass, which means that if uh, we got mass here and we have specific heat capacity, so we can find 
uh, for just one degree we can do this so if the change in temperature we just take it as one degree right so the specific heat capacity would be 460 uh, the uh, heat energy is um, we don't really know and the mass is 85 and the delta theta is 1 degree so the heat supplied for just changing 1 degree would be 460 times 85 times 1 what that what that might be can you please let me know sorry come again Three nine one zero zero. Is that right? Okay, well, that's good. And then we can use this formula. Like you can write the same energy, and the change in temperature is one degree. So that that would be the answer. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Now, if you notice, this is a very simple way of, you know, if you want to you know quickly change thermal capacity to specific heat capacity you should understand that specific heat capacity is q over m delta theta and heat capacity is q over delta theta so both of them like if you notice this section and this section of this basically they're the same which makes it that the specific heat capacity c is equal to the simple like heat capacity and it's the difference is it's divided by mass so you could have also you know just multiplied 460 directly it would give you the answer but that's that's something advanced if you just want to fix it with the uh, uh, equations you can use it and it's all right okay I don't know why cats are fighting today I was gonna comment exactly how interesting the background noise was <laughs> I don't know, two cats are not happy with each other, so what can I do? <laughs> Probably they're not happy with teaching you. So that's why. Alright. You guys understand everything? Yes, sir. Alright. Now we're going to go to the next one. Now this question I want to give you as homework. Because this is a very simple question. It's the same question that we've just done. It is just like the 2D figure. So in, in a case, in an event where, you know, they give you a specific, like a diagram sort of thing, right? A diagram. Uh, in paper six, you can always, you know, uh, use this diagram. That's why I put the actual um, questions here so that you guys know how to draw a diagram in case they want you to draw a diagram, all right? Okay, sir. The only thing that basically, that I want to basically, the rest of the question you'll do, I just want to talk about this particular part, which says, suggest the name of possible materials student could use and explain how it improves the accuracy of the experiment. Like you see, there was iron block and now they've put something around it, as you can see here. Obviously, this is to make sure that the heat energy is not, you know, uh, lost to the surroundings and to ensure that then we must uh, write a suitable I would basically put uh, cotton right and the reason I would put cotton uh, or a cloth maybe or something insulator any insulator that should not melt right right away because it would reduce the heat energy being dissipated to the surroundings I don't want that right that's why excuse me sir yes Imal 
Sir, I have been trying to talk to you, but I couldn't for some reason on my other device. So, can you please explain, uh, like the experiment in the last question? Okay, this one. No, five part A. Yeah, this one. This one. Okay, I'll explain it here. Okay. So what, what we are basically trying to achieve here is, number one, uh, to sp find specific heat capacity, we need heat energy, we need mass, and we need change in temperature. These are the three quantities that we need. Do you agree, Amal? Yes, sir. Now, heat energy, number one, is supplied by... by heater right so we need to know how to find that heat energy that is supplied by the heater right so you know that behind these two wires obviously they might be connected to some circuit right circuit would mean that basically there is a wire that's connected to positive terminal there's a wire that's connected to the negative terminal you agree yes sir to find the power of the heater, the power of heater is given by voltage times the current that is flowing into the heater, right? Yes, sir. So if I place a voltmeter and an ammeter, so voltmeter will give me voltage, current will, give, uh, will be given by ammeter, right? Uh, yeah. So I need a voltmeter for voltage and I need ammeter for current. You agree? Yes. Okay, this should be four. Then basically power of heater can be found, right? Let's say it is P that we found out by multiplying the voltage and current going through. Do you understand this at least? Yes. In the next section, what do we need? Energy. So heat energy supplied will be equal to power of the heater and the time for which the heater was turned on okay yes sir so let's suppose this time i turned on the heater for five minutes right so then what will i get i will get energy which is q i got q this is the first thing i should do understood yes sir understood so even in the last question of paper six when you have to write an experiment you need to explain what to do so you need to exactly know which quantity comes from where and what do you need to find and that's how you will be able to you know answer that question so i'm basically teaching that to you here as well then i wanted to find the mass so obviously mass of iron block can be found using a pan balance do you agree uh, yes sir and the seventh thing that basically I need is the delta theta. Delta theta is the change in temperature, right? Yes. Which is delta theta. So what do we do? For the time heater is on, so suppose five minutes right now, you can find the initial temperature and final temperature and find the change, right? And how do we find the initial final temperature using thermometer, right? Do you agree? Yes, sir. Then obviously when we have the change in temperature, we have the mass, we have the uh, energy supplied by the heater, obviously we can use uh, the equation to find the heat capacity. So that is basically the whole idea of this. You get it? Yes, sir. Pretty good. I know where I put my water. That's up here. Okay, it is here.
all right so anyone who still is confused about it i've also told you how to you know uh, put insulation around something to reduce the energy loss and that would help you get a much better result if you still have doubt please let me know Sir, so can you please go to the other page? This one? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Alright, that's all. An issue. Okay. So going to, so this is, this everything else is your homework and now we're going to go to spe a determination of specific heat capacity of liquids. Now the real issue with this one is that in recent times, in like 10 years, this question has not come but this is included in the syllabus. So we're going to basically draw it manually and see how it's done and then I'm going to explain this to you. So you got basically a tube which has sort of a inlet water inlet and then here we got a water outlet then we got a thermometer that is placed at the outlet and then we got a thermometer which is placed at the inlet. Let's call this one as the T1 and let's call this T2. Okay, is it clear? Now, basically a heating element, a coil of some sort, which just gets warmed up is placed here and obviously it is connected to some power supply like that. Is it clear? Yes. So right now one by one we are going to write it down. So suppose power of heater is given as P. The second thing is time for which heater is turned on is T. Okay. It could be usually we take it as 5 minutes. That's enough. But it could be more or less depending on the situation. Now, so temperature of water initially would be T1. Obviously, when it enters, that's the temperature. And the temperature of water after being uh -oh. after being heated up would be T2 because when it passes through the coil obviously it's going to get heated up. Is that clear? And then mass of water flowing can be found out by 
a pan balance so you can basically use the amount of water that you know was uh, going in and out uh, maybe in a second or maybe in 5 minutes you can check it out using you know you can fill it up you can fill a beaker with it and put it on the pan balance do you guys agree then simply use heat capacity is equal to q upon m delta theta where the q which is the heat energy comes from power of heater times the time that you managed is that clear m is the mass of water that flowed in time t so it could be like in 5 minutes how much water is flowed and delta theta which is the change in temperature will be t2 minus t1 that is the temperature given by the two thermometers which are put it which are put in at the inlet and the outlet to measure the temperature is that clear do you guys understand it's very simple right okay please let me know if you have a question now okay pretty cool huh you guys have written this should i go forward then okay perfect so then let's do this question it says that a block of copper has a mass of 2 kg and the block of copper absorbs this much of thermal energy and specific heat of this which is temperature rise so this is a very simple question u c is equal to q m delta theta the heat energy supplied was 12000 the mass of copper was 2 and the change in temperature is what we need to find where is the heat capacity is 385 could you find the change in temperature please A, sir. A, okay. Whatever you say, it's fine. So the, this now, now this chapter is pretty simple. You guys can you know attempt the questions that I put many at the end. Now the next thing we're going to do is is the uh, thermal expansion. Uh, thermal expansion is basically when you heat a solid or you know cool a solid. different materials depending on their you know thermal capacities they expand at different rates all right so i'm going to write that down different materials depending on their heat capacities expand differently right or at different rates so what happens is let's suppose this is like iron and this is copper so we know that copper is a better conductor of heat than iron right so if you try to heat it up like if you heat 
this strip up so what happens is because they're connected together copper that can actually expand more than iron would act try to push like try to expand like this is that clear everyone now when it tries to expand although the iron is also expanding but the expansion of iron is much slower so in turn what happens is that the copper applies a force on iron that causes the iron to sort of you know bend inwards because in this copper is expanding more than iron so it bends the iron inwards now there are a couple of uses of biometallic strip as well where uh, you know in real time in the iron which is the thing we use to you know iron our clothes from so iron has a biometallic strip which controls the amount of current or heat that uh, goes through it right and that is by using a biometallic strip so when it bends it disconnects the circuit so you might have heard this sound in iron that ma it makes a tick 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 sound have you heard that while ironing your clothes Yes, sir. That ticking sound is basically the bending of bimetallic strip, and when it gets too hot, whatever temperature setting you've done, when it gets too hot, it basically bends, and it disconnects the circuit, so the current doesn't flow anymore, and the temperature can be maintained at a certain point. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. If you have any questions, please let me know. Okay. Now there are many uses of uh, thermal expansion as well. Like in bridges, you might have like when you're going on a road and that's a bridge, you might have seen these zigzag metallic strips on that. Have you guys seen that? these metallic strips basically are used so that in in hot weather if there is expansion happening to the whole you know the bridge the bridge must not come into the stress right so they give they leave a gap and that gap is filled up by this right that allows some room for expansion so that the bridge doesn't you know break itself so the right we leave a gap in bridges to allow for thermal expansion so that the bridge does not get damaged by it is it clear yes please here you go okay one example that i basically wanted to you know share and that you can write here the wires on electric poles if you have noticed that the electric poles are like this and the wires a bit sagging who can tell me why the wires are sagging why can't they make wires like taut like straight 
Why do they have to sag it a bit? They might constrict during winters. Okay. In the winter, they'll constrict so then they break if they were tight. In winters, we must allow for them to bear contraction. All right. If we sag it too much, what is basically uh, a disadvantage of that? I'm sure in the summers when they expand, it will go even more down, so it will be touching other things and getting into things and basically yeah. break again. So if we sag too much in summers, they might touch things down below, right. So that's good. So they might sag even more and then obviously it might be uh, a bad thing because cars and people are crossing so that could, could cause a problem, right. Very good. Now, one example which is a very tricky one, I just wanted to, you know, explain this to you. Let me copy this down and then we're gonna look at this. Uh oh. Oh, I can't copy this. That's not fair. I have to make one more. So suppose this is the, that nut and washer that we're looking at. So, you should understand a nut and washer is like this. There's a nut like this. And the washer is the thing that goes over the nut that screws into it. Do you guys understand this? Yes, sir. Now, sometimes what happens is that the nut is not tightening and we want it to tight. So what happens is that there could be two things. If I want to put a nut into it, it's not tightening, what should I do? Should I heat it or should I uh, cool it? You should heat the washer. Okay. So if we heat the washer, what's going to happen is that it is going to expand like this. You agree? Yes. But the problem is that if it expands outwards, because the inside is also hollow, which means it will also expand from the inside as well. So that would actually not help us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So what are we going to do then? We are then going to cool it. So when you cool it, it contracts from both ends, which means this end will be like the outer circumference is going to get shorter like this because it contracts. But also it will help us contract this section as well because now it will just particles will you know come closer to each other that would help us get a bigger you know opening so that we can screw the nut on do you understand yes sir. so writing this question has come a lot of times and a lot of students get it wrong by saying they will heat it although it makes sense to heat because it's gonna expand but actually it doesn't expand that way it basically expands from all sides which also includes the center section and if it expands from the center section the hole would be smaller not bigger so that's a trick question here okay uh, you guys understand any questions please let me know okay you can write this down and then we're gonna go forward
All right. Then let's go and answer this question. So in this question it says a bimetallic strip is used to control the temperature of electrical appliances. It is made of two different metals fixed together. The diagram shows the shape of bimetallic strip before and after heating. Okay. It says which statement is correct? Metal P contracts more than metal Q on heating. Okay. Metal Q contracts more than metal P. Does it contract in heating? Yeah, so it means both of these answers are absolutely incorrect. And then metal P expands more than metal Q or metal Q expands more than metal P. Who's going to answer this? P. P expands because it's basically going out and it's basically pushing in the other one. So obviously metal P is going to expand more than metal Q. So that's the same thing that I've shown you just before. Okay. So that's, that's basically it. Now I want you guys to do this question on your own. This is a homework. This is a fact question. We've already done it. And then, yes. I think there is something on specific latent heat of vaporization and fusion that's not included. Heat of latent heat of vaporization and latent heat, specific latent heat of uh, fusion, right? Yes. Uh, it's not included anymore. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. It, the, the, the whole thing basically is... Um, sort of uh, basically it, it it's something that helps like it is the amount of heat that helps a, a material to melt or boil right like that but the formula and everything else is gone so we don't have to do it necessarily now all right all right so i believe